Hello, my name is Mark Pedersen. I am the author of Cannabis Restoration. This is Nine Points to Real Legalization. I created this video to give you a better understanding of my initiative. We'll try to touch on the most provocative issues. The legal document that our petitioners will be carrying amounts to eight pages, eight and a half by 14, or four pages double-sided. For a better understanding, I've cut through the legal stuff to address the heart of this initiative, the nine points to real legalization. Ours is the very first cannabis initiative to offer real legalization. But what is real legalization? So much confusing jargon, medical, recreational, adult use, decrim, legal, from state to state, the pot industry has made such a mess of it all. What do we believe? Who can we trust? It's all so scary, particularly when a wrong move could still land you in jail. But how is cannabis restoration different? Quite simply, no penalties. When it comes to cannabis, language has become so twisted. It's difficult to know for sure what is true. That's why we have stripped away the hype and the half-truths. With cannabis restoration, there are no penalties, period. Just nine points to provide protection for the plant and for everyone who uses it. The following acts are not unlawful and shall not be an offense under Missouri law. A. Possession and or consumption of cannabis for personal or medical use. B. Cultivating cannabis for personal or medical use. Notice the simplicity? That was intentional. Lawmakers, the pot industry, and most of all, pot reform organizations have wanted you to believe that truly legalizing cannabis was impossible. But of course, they had their own reasons for wanting you to believe that. And it has nothing to do with health or safety, yours or anyone else's, and everything to do with padding their pocket at your expense. They've been doing it for decades. Many of you have been paying dues for years to organizations promising cannabis reform. Some I know have paid out to those finely dressed criminals for half a century. Enough is enough. Cannabis, legal to possess, legal to consume, legal to grow, no restrictions. F, no one shall be denied housing solely based on their use of cannabis. G, no one shall be denied employment solely based on their use of cannabis. You cannot be denied a place to live or lose your job just because of cannabis. No special conditions, no ifs, ands, or buts, as you see in competing initiatives. For generations, cannabis consumers have been forced to live in substandard housing and work low-wage jobs in order to continue to benefit from cannabis and yet stay under the radar. It hasn't been easy. The draconian laws and hypocrisy forced us all to be criminals in our eyes and in that of society. And for what? It has been proven repeatedly that cannabis consumers are safer employees than those who do not. Why is that? Because cannabis is not alcohol or prescription drugs and should not be compared to them. It's food. H. The use and or possession of cannabis shall in no way impede one's legal right to possess a firearm. Your Second Amendment rights protected. Age of access. Those pushing competing initiatives have tried quite desperately to make this a hot button topic. No mandatory minimum age for access? Well, 
What are we to believe? Truth or the hysteria spread by our own government? You know, every day our children are exposed to a plethora of highly lethal toxins. I don't know anyone who locks up their liquor. Prescription drugs are usually left out on a kitchen counter or bed stand. And on some rare occasions, placed in unlocked bathroom medicine cabinets, paint, mineral spirits, solvents, antifreeze, easily accessible in most garages or basements or garden sheds, yet most don't ingest these poisons. Why? Two things. Parental guidance when you're a child, personal responsibility when you're a grown. Look, there's no denying it. I have a problem with age limits on cannabis. The drug war has destroyed the lives of untold thousands, perhaps millions, all under the guise of protecting children. Over the last 15 years, I have interviewed the chronically and terminally ill all over this country. Over the last five years, I have worked specifically with late stage cancer patients. The youngest that I have worked with was eight months. I have known countless patients who have shrunk their tumors with cannabis oil. And yet, in so-called legal states, Dispensaries are obligated by law to spread deceitful, prohibitionist language claiming toxicity. In some states, allowing your terminally ill child to have access to this life-saving medicine could get a parent charged with child endangerment and their child removed from their home. Even when removing them could cause harm and possibly death. If cannabis is safe, for our most vulnerable, the terminally ill, and our gravely ill children, why isn't it safe for everyone else? A. The use and or possession of cannabis shall not be ground for issuing a driving under the influence DUI stop, charge, arrest, or fines when operating or a passenger of a motor vehicle. Stops, charges, fines, and arrests shall be the product of visible and or previously proven non-cannabis infractions of Missouri law. Actual crime, not assumed or coerced. Stops, charges, fines, and arrests shall be the product of visible and or previously proven non-cannabis infractions of Missouri law. Actual crime, not assumed or coerced. Stops should be for crimes, not opinions, not profiling. Asset or civil forfeiture shall no longer be used in the state of Missouri through association with cannabis, cannabis cultivation, its use and or possession in any way. Stealing badge or not, is still stealing. That's what civil forfeiture really is. Just ask any of the many Americans spread out across this nation that have learned so terribly. We must end the injustice here and now. D. Upon the passage of this act, all persons incarcerated or under supervision of the Missouri Board of Probation and Parole for nonviolent cannabis only offenses, which are no longer illegal in the state of Missouri under this act, shall be immediately released. Immediately released. No special court hearings, no court costs, no legal fees, no hidden records. My God, people, this is the very least we could do. E. Within 60 days of the passage of this act, a legal document shall be developed and made available to the public ordering the immediate destruction of all cannabis-related 
nonviolent civil and criminal records in Missouri and for any offense covered by this amendment, which is no longer illegal in the state of Missouri under this act. This document shall be distributed to all pertinent parties throughout the state. F. Within 60 days, Missouri's courts shall order the immediate expungement of civil and criminal records pertaining to all nonviolent cannabis only offenses which are no longer illegal in the state of Missouri under this act. Civil and criminal records destroyed. I have put together five most important issues in cannabis reform. They are what about our children? Cannabis and DUI. The fallacy of baby steps in cannabis reform. Why removal from the CSL is so important. Amnesty and cannabis. All of these are accessible from CannabisPatientNetwork.com We have provided these resources. CannabisRestoration dot org real legalization mo dot com cannabis patient network dot com